Hey, I'm Luke. I'm the Reading Games Guy. Today we're going to talk about how physics-based destruction works in games, particularly Instruments of Destruction. Let's get started. This is Instruments of Destruction. It's available now for PC and coming soon in consoles. You take control of various vehicles and complete simple missions and challenges. Most of the missions involve destroying buildings. The game uses a physics-based destruction system, and we'll go deep into the details on how that works. But first, a quick bit of history. Before I went solo in 2010, I worked on Red Faction Guerrilla at Volition for five years. It was known for its advanced physics-based destruction. I did my part to make it feel good by tweaking lots of numbers, and I worked with programmers and artists on many things around destruction. But I didn't actually work on any code for the destruction itself. Dave Baranek and Eric Arnold were the people most responsible for the core destruction tech. RFG was one of the most technically impressive games ever made. And yet it didn't win the GDC Technical Excellence Award in 2010. Moving on, my point is this. Instruments of Destruction exist in large part because of the awesome team that made Red Faction Guerrilla. When I started on my 20th solo game in 2020, I wanted to have destruction in it. I had an idea of how it should work, but I didn't really know what I was doing. So I started with the most basic and important element, the structure. What is a structure? Let's figure it out and make it destroyable. At its core, a structure is a lot of walls and ceilings and floors all connected together to keep things simple, we're making structures out of boxes only. These boxes are called blocks and instruments. The connections are what we need to focus on. We need to figure out which blocks to connect, and we need to let the physics system know how to connect the blocks. For deciding what to connect, we'll expand the blocks a tiny bit and see if they intersect. If they intersect enough, they connect, no problem. There are a couple of ways to connect blocks together. The first is to combine all the blocks into one object. The second is to have each block be its own object and add one joint per connection. Joints would be great for simplicity and for bending, but they're expensive to simulate, especially when you have a lot of them, and they can be very difficult to stabilize and control. But we're going to skip ahead because we didn't use joints. Combining all the blocks into a single object sounds easy. It certainly runs faster, but it's a lot more work than joints. To start, we have to track block to block connections in code. In instruments, these block connections are called links. For structures with 100 blocks, we might have 200 links. We'll need to track which links are broken and create new structures or blocks when they have no attached links. We'll also link the lowest blocks to the ground so they won't get pushed around. In RFG, the links had hit points along with some destruction information. In instruments, the blocks have hit points and they break away when their hit points drop below zero. It's a subtle difference, but both ways work. The next issue is collision response. Let's say we have a heavy ball smashing into our now destroyable wall. It doesn't go through the wall. It acts like it hit a solid wall because it was solid at the moment of impact. In Gorilla, I believe this problem was solved the correct way. Roll back the physics sim and break off the pieces and run the simulation again. I did not figure out how to roll back physics. Instead, we can just hack away at this problem until things look good enough. In the collision event, we move the ball forward somewhat and add back most of its previous velocity. We'll need to tell the broken off pieces where to go too, but that's not hard. And it looks fine. This is our first tacky solution and certainly not the last. The individual blocks we break off can further break into smaller blocks. This helps add more destruction without having as much initial complexity. Look at this structure suspended by a very skinny support. It looks like it should fall down, but it won't. It has no concept of hit points or lengths or how much mass it's supporting, but it's not too difficult to solve the issue. Let's start by arranging the blocks into layers. Each layer is the number of links to go from the block to the ground. Now that all the blocks have layers, we can add up how much mass and how many hit points each layer has. Do it from the top down and we can track the total mass the layer is supporting. If our layer has a very high mass to hit point ratio, we'll apply some damage to it and maybe even a bit to adjacent layers to make it more natural. If it doesn't break the structure and we're over a certain ratio, we'll just run the calculations again a moment later. It ends up being a fast and reliable solution as long as we get the math right. And we'll add another hack or two to make offset sections fall faster. There are a couple other events where we need to run some special code. When a structure hits the ground after falling over or hits another structure, it'll take a lot of damage, but only at the point of impact. Everything else is fine so we need to spread the damage out. Theoretically, it should spread out along the link blocks. For instruments, the system is simpler. Damage spreads in a small sphere, along a flat plane, or very randomly. It's not correct, but it's fast. It can be used for multiple things and didn't take too long to do. At this point, we have our destruction system essentially done and working, but it doesn't feel as good as it could. Particle effects will help, 
but there's more to do first. Structures need more detail, locks are breaking into debris, and damaged blocks don't look damaged. Decals in games can mean many things, but they usually refer to a special texture or small mesh attached to a larger object. For Instruments of Destruction, a decal looks similar to other blocks and structures, except they are fake in many ways. They are intended to add detail to a structure and to its destruction for lower cost. They have no collision until they break off the structure. They have no concept of links, though they are attached to a block. They don't break into smaller decals, but they deform after they break off. Debris pieces are basically the smallest kind of physics-based object in the game. Like decals, they will collide with larger objects like blocks, but not with other debris or decals. Some debris has trails of particles attached. There are collision only pieces with particle trails too. Debris pieces disappear after a certain amount of time, or when enough new debris is created. Like decals and blocks, debris pieces use shader-based deformation. Decals and debris have deformation across their entire mesh, but each side of a block can independently render as deformed or not. Deformed sides can also display rebar, depending on the material. Finally, we get to the smallest element of destruction, particle effects. Instruments of Destruction uses a custom GPU particle system. The coolest thing about the particle system is the collision detection. Even the small mesh particles collide with the structure's world and player vehicle. The collision isn't realistic, but it adds just enough to make the particles feel like they're part of the world. There's a lot more I can talk about with destruction. Like how the grass reacts to destruction and debris, how giant explosions work, how water reacts, how tornadoes, earthquakes, and hurricanes work, how the sound effects work with hundreds of collisions per frame, how the various types of camera shake and vibration work, and how the game draws lots of stuff at once. But this is getting long, and that final point is the important one. Destruction is more satisfying when there's more stuff happening. The destruction in instruments feels good mostly because of quantity, not quality. It's not just the quantity of a specific object type, but the hierarchy of how things break apart. At the top end, we have the undamaged structures. Those can break into smaller structures of many different shapes and sizes. For all structures, the blocks can break off in a number of ways, or get destroyed outright. Most of those blocks can further break into smaller blocks, sometimes more than once. All the blocks and decals eventually break into debris with physics colliders. Debris is also used when a block breaks off of a structure. We have three major kinds of particles, and pseudo-volumetric smoke particles. So we have a hierarchy of destruction that scales down naturally, and we have as much of each layer as we can. None of the individual elements are particularly great or especially well done, but in large numbers and working together, we get destruction that feels satisfying. I think the way to make physics-based destruction better in future games is pretty obvious. Just look at each part of the hierarchy above and make it better. The structures are bland, the blocks are boxy, the decals and debris are limited, the particles are decent, but having more variety and higher quality would help, and volumetric smoke would make a huge difference. All those are doable now, and a more optimized game could have a lot more of everything. And then there's terrain destruction, but we're going to skip that. Besides, good CGI destruction already does all these things. That tech just needs a few more hacks and optimizations and more powerful hardware. There are a lot of ways to improve the destruction, especially visually. But one area where instruments excels is in the physics and interaction. Ropes are used to connect some structures, but there's some untapped potential here. Compound jointed structures are supported but not used in the full game. Joint stability, poor editor support, and a lack of time were the main reasons. The benefits were also a little bit unclear for the direction of the game. In the end, this is definitely another potential area for improvement. And that's the thing. Physics-based destruction creates a lot of potential. The game's potential felt overwhelming at times. There are so many things I could have made with this, but that's a story for another day. To wrap up, let's take one last look at destruction. Like Instruments of Destruction, this video is a lot of work, so be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And comment down below if you have any questions on destruction, I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching the end. Bye.